Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, to the agenda today, we'll mainly cover um, costs um, on our infra. So the, the first topic that I want to mention is um, I did some cleanup on the Jenkins infra organization. So we had a lot of contributors within the organization, but a lot of them stepped down for whatever the reason. And the thing that I wanted to do was to create an alumni group where I could put everybody there. So they would still be inside the organization so we can still send them notification, um, contact them. Um, but at the same time, they don't have change permission. So we reduce the risk of an attacker to take over, to take on their account and modify whatever the key repository. So the idea is if, I mean, if you don't need a specific permission, usually it's easier to just ask to be removed. Um, so yeah, we don't take extra risk. Um, and usually for every Git repository, I try to have at least two or three uh, maintainers um, from different time zones. So we are sure that we can have someone who can merge um, any changes rapidly. Um, so yeah, um, another major change that I did in the organization was to switch the default admin permission to maintainer permission. In most of the cases, we don't have people we don't need people with admin permission. So again, really few people with admin permission and otherwise uh, we delegate the maintenance um, to different um, teams. That's, yeah, we, yeah that's, that's many about that. Any question on this one? No, some, something that I would like maybe to put in place when I have some time is maybe some Terraform uh, to monitor default configuration. So the idea would be, for instance, to be sure that we always have at least two, two, two teams uh, per Git repository, whatever. I don't want to use Terraform to control the Jenkins Infra organization um, because I'm a bit afraid that someone modified the default configuration, but I would like to be able to identify if we need um, to create permission um, to some person. Um, so typically when something that I would like to solve is when we had an issue with the update center one week ago, um, Daniel opened a PR on the status kit repository, but nobody was around to merge the PR except me. Um, this is typically the kind of situation that I would like to avoid in the future where basically someone creates a Git repository, um, put some automation around that, and then forget to grant the right permission. Um, so this is the kind of situation where it's annoying. Um, another thing that I also fixed a lot was people who transfer Git repositories to the Jenkins and Frank organization and then lost access to the Git repository because that person only has uh, read permission. Um, so again, you need one person to fix that. Um, so we have more than 100 Git repositories on the GitHub organization. So um, it's not always easy to, to verify accesses on those. So we definitely need a better way to, to handle um, access there. Um, the next topic, which is very brief, um, we start to version and chart maintained by the Jenkins Info organization. Um, so update CLI is now, um, can now um, handle that uh, workflow. So typically when a new Docker image is published, um, update CLI detect that, update um, the right ham chart, bump the chart version. And so I would like to, I'll probably be, I'll probably use a, a GitHub app. I think Eric, you already have some experience with that, um, but I'll probably put, uh, sorry, a GitHub page um, so we can query the right, ham chart version that we need. Um, Garrett, do you have any experience doing that? So um, about GitHub pages for ham charts. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I have, I've got that with, um, on the captain hook, that's doing it in that way. So I think you just okay. need to create, you just need to create the branch manually first, the first okay. time. And then um, I think it's the chart releaser action, if you want to do it that way. Um, okay. we'll, pu we'll publish to that. Okay. Um, I've got examples of that working, if you want to see that. So I can... Yeah, that, I think that would be a, small, a, a, nice, a nice improvement to the situation. Because right now we use Hamchart. Um, 
located on a local directory, which means that when we do change on the ham chart, we cannot easily roll back to a previous version. And also, we also install the same ham chart on, the, on, the, on different clusters. Um, so the idea would be able to, yeah, to, to have that flexibility. Um, now that we have everything in place to automate those ham charts, uh, I think we are ready. It wouldn't take us too much time to, to improve. Um, the next major um, topic that I brought to this meeting is about the cost. So um, I reviewed the different accounts that we have and I updated the Google Sheets um, with a different um, cost. And basically, we are we we increased a lot our Azure invoice. So we are slightly above the limit, 10k um, that is asked by the CDF. So we now have to identify ways to reduce the costs. Um, we also, so on Azure, um, I would say one fourth of the costs is for CI.jenkins.io. So we just have to put stronger limits on CI.jenkins.io agents, um, the number of agents that we can use. Um, Right now, we are using either for Windows machines or for Azure container instances. Um, that's that's something. The, the other thing is we also increase our cost on the Amazon accounts. The thing is, it's normal to, to increase the cost because we, we have more usage. Um, we work on those accounts, um, so it's totally normal. But we also have from time to time to clean up old services and identify ways to limit um, the growth um, of those accounts. And so that's definitely the, the perfect moment for that. Um, uh, another account that I look at was Rackspace. Um, for some reason that I cannot identify, um, the machine, uh, the network bandwidth drastically increase. So this is the machine used by archive.jenkins.io. So we had two times more traffic over February and I don't remember uh, any change. Uh, I, I just right now can't explain why um, we have more traffic on that machine. So this is something that I discovered this, this afternoon and I have to, to dig a little bit there. Any questions so far? So the, the good thing with the rack space is um, the cost increased, but we are still below the limit. Okay, so we're not we're not at risk of receiving a bill from rack space for the increase. No. Now I assume your your question on why did the traffic double is likely due to oh there must have been some change somewhere that motivated traffic to arc to go to archives instead of going to the mirrors or to get like it should. Yes. So basically, archive is used as a fallback service when uh, get.jenkins.io is not available. And because of the traffic that goes to get.jenkins.io, even if that service is done for, let's say, one day, um, the traffic is really huge. Um, so when you, when, when you look at the traffic that goes to the mirrors, we have more than a terabyte of traffic. Um, so I just, I mean, it can simply mean that um, get.jenkins.io was done for maybe a few minutes so, or maybe a few hours. And um, <clears throat> there are many reasons why um, traffic was redirected to archive the Jenkins that I have. So this is something that we have to understand. And that, that typically- I'm, 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 yeah? I was just gonna say, I'm still seeing lots of um, plugin download issues from various places. Um, I started creating a doc that captured them all, but it just got too, <laughs> there was too many entries to maintain. Um, so, okay, so I had not seen any plugin download issues recently, but you're consistently seeing them, Gareth, and from all over. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably getting five, maybe, or 10 a day based on the repos that are triggering. Um, just had one now on the Tecton client plugin that needs to create a custom image with the new plugin in, but it needs to download other ones. It failed to connect to, yeah, got a timeout, failed to connect to something um, when downloading plugins. So the reason why it's 
hard to debug that specific issues is because the traffic arrived to get the Jenkins.io, get the Jenkins.io, identify the closest mirror to you, and then redirect you to that mirror. If for some reason that mirror in that time became really slowly, uh, became be, be very slow, sorry, um, then you get timeout issues with that specific mirror. But if you ask someone in to, to install the plugin, uh, that person maybe is in a different part of the world and will download from a different mirror and everything will be fine. Um, so here we have two ways to improve the situation. One can be done on mirror bits. Uh, so mirror bits can be more aggressive about disabling mirrors or enabling mirrors. But the other way would be from Jenkins to, not, to Jenkins or the Jenkins CLI to not fail or at least retry um, when the mirror is slow. So, so Gareth, I assume your failures though are coming from things that you're actually running in the cloud or are they from your local, your, your local environment? Uh, it's all in the cloud. Okay. So- which is, which is also something that you have to keep in mind is because if you run your instance in the cloud, let's say Gareth is in, um, European time zone, and the in the machine is in the US, then your machine will be redirected to your to a US mirror. And so, if from your machine you try to debug that situation, everything will be fine because you're not in the same region than your machine. Yeah. And and Gareth, I think the the cloud regions that you're tending to use are US based, typically, right? I don't know if they're US East or US West, but I'm assuming that, that they are commonly US-based or, or are you using cloud regions that are, are Europe-based? I'm not 100% certain. So some of the recent failures have been on, on, on actually on, on a Tekton client plugin, which has been built with GitHub Actions, but it's trying to build a custom Docker image ah. and run its test inside there. And, and as part of that, it uses the plugin installation manager to download all the plugins. Right, um, and so therefore oh, it's not it. Yeah. We're seeing that fail quite a bit. Um, I mean, there's other issues around that as well, where we, but like not in not so much infrastructure, but, but we see like if I have a Jenkins ver Jenkins version that's fairly static, and a plugin text file where all the plugins are defined. And I build it once, and then a week later I build it again. Chances are I'm not going to get the same build. Uh, and I actually quite often get build failures because it's it tells me that my the, the combination of the plugins that I'm using are incorrect. Yeah, and and that one I think is a documentation gap more than anything else because there's a there's a setting that says honor my version numbers. I absolutely mean it, and. <laughs> And right now, the default with plugin installation manager is to not honor my version numbers, even if I absolutely mean it. Right. So, so I'll I can I can go through that one with you. I had a long dis we've got a discussion going in one of the plugin installation manager issues or pull requests about that particular setting. I mean that yeah. Let me know what that is because I can apply that to these builds, and hopefully that will reduce the number of failures. And then I yeah, you're because and then you, I'll only see I should only see like actual timeouts and disconnects and things. Right. And you are you are using exact version numbers in every plugin that you're specifying, right? And you're specifying them all. So you've got an exhaustive list. Yeah. So I think you want the minus minus last faults. Last, is that right? I'll I'll look it up and send it to you, Gareth. I That'll think be it's great. Cheers. Yeah. Because I, I know I've seen that one and I wrestled with it myself. Well, why is it going and getting a different version than what I specified? I gave exactly the spec. Um, just uh, on the increased for um, rack space with the... So archives, the Jenkins. is that also the first place the plugins become available before the move uh, um, Probably... Uh... So basically, we have a script. So we have a script um, located on a machine, and that script will upload artifact to archive the Jenkins IO to the OSUS network. Um, so I think it's the first OSUS and mirror um, that is updated, and I think archive come at the end. Um, I remember so, Daniel saying something about like the first within the first sort of like 
30 minutes to an hour or something of a new plugin being released um, where it's not available on the mirrors, it tends to fall back to somewhere. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, wondering where, I'm wondering whether or not that scenario is happening more now. And that's why we're seeing increased traffic. That's a good suggestion. Um, we can easily identify that on the Jenkins uh, infra chat repository. I think it's. Oh, no, you can't, no, sorry, you can't see that. Um, but I can tell you uh, what are the fallback machines. Let me double check this right now. I mean, in the, in the builds that I'm doing for the. So the fallback. So the fall. So the fall. So the fallback is definitely fallback.get.jenkins.io and archives.jenkins.io. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So that, that would explain why um, the traffic increase in archives.jenkins.io. Because, oh. because the way, so yeah, so the, the, the way mirror bits um, works is we upload, so mirror bits as a local file system. So we upload the file there. And then on the mirror bits, there is a job that regularly builds a uh, file hashes. So MD5, uh, char, char 256, and so on. Um, then identify mirrors that also contain those files with the same hash. Um, and because every mirrors don't necessarily synchronize immediately with mirror bits, you always have a gap um, between the moment that file is available on every mirror. So the fallback situation is if get.jenkins cannot redirect you to a mirror, then it sends you the, 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 the service um, from the fallback, from a fallback location, basically. And one of them is a loop on itself is to query get.jenkins.io. Um, so for, for, that, for that to know if a serve, if a mirror, I mean, to know if um, of, um, a specific version is already available, you can just go to get Jenkins.io, you search for the plugin, so slash plugins, the name of the plugin, the version, blah, blah, blah. And then you can specify um, question mark mirror list. And then you have, so I can just provide, for instance, um, uh, Chat. I just put the link in the chat um, because I won't share. Or, or maybe maybe Mark, you can share your screen specifically for this one. So it's not a plugin. So I put the link in um, the chat here, so you can just open. So that's an example with the Windows. So we, we know that information from um, your orbit. So typically what it says here is on top right, you have the known hashes that your orbit's known. And at the end, then you have a list of mirrors uh, with the corresponding um, file. Um, so for instance, if you look for very old Jenkins version, whatever, then you'll see that no mirrors contains those files because mirrors are usually configured to contain, to keep one year old data. So that's something. And at the same time, if you just release a plugin, um, yeah, also, yeah, the reason why it does not work for Windows is because we changed uh, the, the, the file structure. Uh, when we switch to the new Jenkins uh, release. So if you just, um, instead of Windows, you look for Debian, for instance, I think. Um, get the Jenkins that you know, Debian. So if, if you take, let's say, copy link location. I put a, a URL here. So I put a second URL. So this one is a very old Jenkins version that normally nobody would install. But basically what it says is no mirrors contain that file. So it fall back to fall back zero or fall back one. Those are fall back that get the Jenkins that I use or archive the Jenkins that I use. Archive is located on a different machine, just a, um, yeah. 
different machine. Uh, followed by the get.jenkins.io is just um, the same machine that get.jenkins.io. So it's just a hack because uh, mirror bits doesn't doesn't distribute file, only redirects you. Uh, so it's just a, a second service running on the same location that just gives you the file. Um, so yeah, that, that's all about the mirror. So typically that, that's the situation that, that will explain why the traffic increase on archives of Jenkins radio, which is fine. Um, but uh, yeah. So we can go back to the notes. Oh, while you're there, maybe I can show maybe a few things with, with mirror bits as well. Um, so if you take the example, so the Windows link. So if you open the mirror Windows link, but this time you replace the end of your mirror list by mirror stats. Uh, by mirror stats. Okay, now you have the list of mirrors and you have, uh, you know, when was the last time that mirror was um, updated? Um, also, for every mirror, you have two lines, a dark line and a light one. So the dark, if you put the, the, the cursor on the, the dark one, it shows you how many uh, files were downloaded. And if you put on the other one, you see how many traffic was downloaded from that location, from that specific mirror. Um, so that's one of the information you have. Another. So that is in that is in the last twenty four since since midnight local time from yeah. here or yeah. from you from UTC. Oh, since midnight UTC. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the thing. Um, another information that you have is if you just put stats um, okay. instead of stats. stats. So then you know how many times that specific file was downloaded today, a month ago, a year ago. So if you put an old version, um, a more recent version, uh, let's say the latest weekly, for instance. Yeah, 286. Okay, no downloads of today's release. How about last week's release? And you can also remove the SHA because the, the file is the SHA. Uh, oh, right. Instead of... Ah, okay. And because I was looking at the SHA, that's, that's of course, if not, people aren't downloading the SHA already, <laughs> 1,400 today. Wow. Okay. Yes. Um, so that's something interesting. Uh, something important to keep in mind is um, those data are stored in the Redis database. And I, did not, I don't guarantee that we won't lose data. Uh, those are just there for information. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's not, I mean, and uh, there is another one. So mirror list, mirror stats, and you have stats and you have another one. Yeah, I don't remember, but yeah, that's all for mirror bits for now. Okay. That's a nice, that's a nice project. Um, if we go back to the um, agenda, the last topic that I want to mention is Damien has been working about on deploying an AKS cluster on the Amazon account. So that AKS cluster will only be used for CI to Jenkins that IO Jenkins agents. Um, the cluster is there, is configured on CI to Jenkins that IO. And so the plan is now to update the labels to instead of deploying containers on Azure container instance, uh, we will deploy containers uh, on that cluster. So the purpose is to have a clear understanding of what cluster size we need for CI to Jenkins.io. So we'll better identify the cost um, there. Um, ideally, we also would like to use that um, as a way um, when we have sponsoring discussion with cloud providers. Um, because we'll be using Kubernetes cluster, it means that we'll have better portability. So if tomorrow we decide to to switch, let's say, to a correct cluster running on Azure, um, then we just have to deploy the cluster and we, we just update the community's configuration and that's it. So the purpose here is just to simplify the management of CI to Jenkins.io. Um, that cluster will be used, um, because that cluster will be used uh, for CI, which is a very public, I mean, that's a public instance, we won't, we won't be using it for other services that the Jenkins agent so that's something really important. Hi, Rick. Hi, it's uh, just in time. Yep. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's really nice, and um, we are almost ready to you to to switch to it. Um, basically, what what will change on CI Jenkins.io right now? Um, we are using Maven containers for SCI, and we'll soon switch to the Jenkins inbound agent that we built for um, the Jenkins info organization. But we recently switched uh, those uh, on CIDA Jenkins as well. So that's fine. Nothing will change, basically, except that that will be running on Kubernetes instead of um, Azure container instance. And um, yeah, any question on this topic? So uh, uh, then uh, we are almost ready to finish um, that, that meeting. Um, there is just one last question. We have a resource group on the Azure account named Rust Linux Dev Group. Um, and I have no idea who created that. Apparently, we started open source content, open, an open source uh, machine. Um, so I, I, I probably just delete that resource group then. Yeah, maybe it's something from Tyler's experiments because Tyler is uh, the main uh, Rust hacker, so maybe he used another account. Well, and and he's also a SUSE user, therefore an Open SUSE user, so that would that would double double hint that he it, that may be a no. Tyler thing. Yeah, probably. I mean, no, normally he has a different account, um, and for the weird. Um, so the, the, the fun story is when, when he transferred me the Jenkins account to me, for some reason, he also granted me access to his own account. Uh, so I can, I can see what he's doing, but yeah, that's, that's a good suggestion. Have a look at that. Thanks everybody. Uh, so I think we are good. Any last topic that we want to cover before we finish the meeting? Mm, no topics. Um, maybe one question about um, issues Jenkins IO stability because I've noticed a few times uh, that uh, the service uh, had uh, delays and timeouts when accessing it uh, from Europe. I wonder whether our monitoring catches it. So our monitoring did not catch that, but something to keep in mind for the monitoring is it's running from the US. Oh, mm -hmm. so maybe that would explain why we didn't catch that. Uh, I can look at it if um, we get notification for Jira. You're not the first one complaining about um, the speed of that service, and especially from people from in Europe. So maybe maybe we can see with the Linux Foundation. Yeah, yeah I, because um, sorry, I might complain, but I can say for sure that the previous setup had the performance issues much more often. So even in this case, yeah, I didn't grumble, but it would be nice uh, to figure out what's uh, the root root cause. But yeah, for some reason, each time people, each time I, I had people complaining about uh, the speed of that service, I tested myself and everything was working fine. But um, I'm not, I'm not an EV user of that service anyway, so I'm probably not the best person to measure. Well, and I, I don't know that we have any synthetic checks doing multi-site, but the Datadog synthetics are based in Frankfurt, so that might be a great excuse to configure or read see if we already have a synthetic check of issues.jenkins.io initiating from frankfurt because then it is it is europe based that's yeah we, we i'm pretty sure we do so i can quickly look at it um where is that I think it would be generally nice, though, even if you discover an issue, I'm not sure what could we do about that. We, oh, we, I mean, we can open um, a support ticket on the Linux Foundation. Um, yes, so... they've been quite responsive. I just opened an issue Sunday and they already responded to me Monday and started work on it. It wasn't related to performance, but they've seemed quite responsive. They are complaining uh, to some of our service provider. Uh, without finger pointing, I agree. <laughs> and so I am looking at um, the, the the dashboard from Frankfurt, and accepted from load from time to time, which remained pretty stable. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. Don't so know. so we already have a synthetic check. Yes, we do. Okay. 
And so we have a synthetic check and we also have uh, containers running from the Kubernetes cluster that monitor that endpoint as well. And we have one check from the Puppet Master as well. So in fact, we have the test from multiple locations. Um, otherwise, um, when such issues occur, um, a good a good a good place to look at if you don't have Datadog information um, is to look at status to Jenkins IO. Um, we have basic um, HTTP check there. I mean, it, it take it takes some time to load. Um, there is nothing that I mean. If we want to have those information there. Um, I couldn't find a way to, to, to increase the speed. But yeah, if you look at normal issues, you're, you're there. Um, obviously, it's only for seven days in this case. But uh, that's usually what, what I look um, when someone complains about um, the, respons the responsiveness of the service. <laughs> Um, yeah, well. So, well, like just for where you, your operations, I assume, are more than just a, a request to the status page. You are probably authenticated and doing real work. Yeah, so I should be authenticated at the time. Uh, and yeah, sometimes uh, I just get timeouts. Okay. Sometimes it opens slowly. Interesting. Yeah, uh, and, I, and, and, and and again, those those tech are just simple um, queries on on the API. So there is a query on slash API slash ping. So it's a very light test. So it's not because the test is passing correctly that the service is behaving correctly. Yeah, that's two different right, things. Right. Right. But it's just a good uh, a good indicator if something is wrong uh, or not. Yeah. The last topic. Yeah. So what I would suggest is to open a Jira, t a Jira ticket on the Linux Foundation. Maybe they have some information there. Um, uh, I also got complaints about um, email issues with um, Jira. So Gavin does not receive email from uh, Jira anymore. But I have to look at SendGrid because something that already happened in the time in the past was um, his email address was put on the bounce list. Um, so maybe, maybe they could. Yeah. I'm also not receiving email. That was the ticket I opened with with Linux Foundation, and they they asked me to double check and then read the send grid log. So that's you're doing exactly the thing that I need. So the the the, the problem with send grid is only KK and I have access to the accounts, and if we want to put more people on the account, we'll have to pay a lot more. Uh, so right now we are paying fifteen dollars per month to send emails. So the best thing that I would suggest is. When you are ready to debug that, uh, we just schedule some time together. You send an email, um, or at least we, we we generate some data, and then I can monitor um, the, from SendGrid because from SendGrid, I think it's only keep the history for one week or something like that. Um, okay. So we need to be yeah. we need to be sure that. Um, but only KK and I can monitor that, which means that um, only me. Yeah. So I'll send you an invite probably for tomorrow or Thursday. Okay, perfect, then. Um, then I propose to stop here. Thanks everybody for your time and um, see you in RC. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.